welcome to Minecraft Redstone Tutorials. My name is Slugner. And I'm Little Neam. So uh, I'm going to be your camera for today. Um, and in this lesson we're going to teach you some very, very basic redstone stuff. First off, what is redstone and uh, what's the most basic uses of it? So uh, first off, let's cover what redstone actually is. You can see here that I have a redstone torch. The redstone torch is like the plug socket. It provides the power um, and everything needs to have a redstone torch to actually work. Uh, here we have redstone dust. As you can see it's in a cross form. As soon as I put one there you can see it now turns into a line. That's like your cabling so uh, you can run that from your plug socket aka the redstone torch to something to provide power to it. You can see Neem is standing next to a door. We're going to cover how to open a door. So Neem if you want to kick us off. So doors are dead simple. You hit them, they open, they close. However, you can make them open dead easily by using some very, very straightforward redstone. All you do is you take your redstone dust, lead it up to the front of the door, pull it away, and put a torch on it. And right you'll see the door opens. Now, as long as that's on, the door won't well will stay open. You close it, take, yeah, if you take the torch away, it closes. Open, close, open, close. Nice and straightforward. So now let's cover switches and pressure plates. Uh, you can see here that we've got uh, four things lined up. Here we have a switch, this is a button, this is a wooden pressure plate, and this is a stone pressure plate. We have them all rigged up onto these redstone torches sitting on top of the logs, uh, connected with red dust, so that we can demonstrate when they are working. So let's start off with a switch. The switch is very simple, it's just like a light switch in your home. When you hit it, the light turns off and will stay turned off until you hit it again, when the light will turn back on again. Nice and simple to do. And this is what you'll probably use for most of your doors uh, to uh, open and close them. This here is a button. It has to go onto a wall, it can't be on the ground. Um, when you press it, the light will turn off for a certain amount of time, I think it's about a second, and will then turn back on again. So just to show you again, just hit it to turn it on and off. Pressure plates. Pressure plates are a little bit more complicated. This one is a wooden pressure plate. Because of that, when you throw something on top of it, it pushes the pressure plate down, turning the torch off. It will stay turned off as long as there's something on top of it. As soon as I take my spade off, it will uh, it'll turn back on again. You can also stand on these to uh, turn the torches off. Here we have a stone pressure plate, this one here. This cannot be turned off when you throw something on top of it. Whoops, there we go. It has to have either a person or a creeper standing on it. What's one thing you always need to be a bit careful of is that if you build them somewhere too, too easily accessible, connected to your doors let's say, if a creeper stands on it, it will open the door. Um, meaning it's then got access to your house, so that's not always such a good thing. Now as you can see, if I stand on it, the torch will turn off and as soon as I get off it, the torch turns back on again. So uh, that's your four switches. The switch, button, wooden pressure plate, and stone pressure plate. So now we have the same setup with the switch, button, wooden pressure plate, and stone pressure plate on doors. As we explained earlier, the doors will open when activated using the redstone. So with the switch, I can flick the switch and the door opens. The door will stay open until I flick the switch again and then it will turn off. With the button, you can push the button, the door will open, but only for a certain amount of time. With the wooden pressure plate, stand on the pressure plate, and the door will open and stay open until you get off the pressure plate when it will close. This also works with tools, as we said before. So throw something onto it, or throw something onto it, the door will stay open until that item is taken off when the door will close. Stone pressure plates doesn't work with tools. It does work when a player stands on it and the door will stay open until we get off the pressure plate again. So that's how to use switches, buttons and pressure plates with your doors. So as you can see here we have uh, we have a little house. In fact it's Neam's house. You can just see him looking around inside with his arms sticking through the door. Um, and he's built himself a little switch to uh, open and close his door. It's uh, just as we had it before. Nothing's changed except now it's built into a house. There we go. It opens and uh, he can come out or I can go in. 
here we are back at Neem's house, and uh, he's now uh, changed things up a little bit. He no longer has a switch, he now has a pressure plate next to his door. It doesn't matter which one he has, either a stone or a wood, wooden one, they do exactly the same thing. Um, so when you walk onto the pressure plate, the door will open. Now because the pressure plate's next to the door, it doesn't actually need any redstone, it just automatically links itself there. This is useful, you can have these on both sides of the doors so that it opens and then closes as you go through. Another useful thing, as Neil will show you now, is if he hits the door open and then runs out over the pressure pad, the door will close behind him. It's quite a useful way of keeping creepers out of your uh, house without having to always turn around and uh, hit the door closed again. It just wastes time and you will almost definitely forget it. And surprise surprise, here we are back at Neem's house again. He's got to be getting angry at me visiting all the time because he keeps changing the way to get in. Instead of having the pressure plate there now, he now has the button next to his uh, next to his door. Again, just like the pressure pad, this doesn't actually need any uh, redstone to work because it's next to it. I just hit it and it opens. Although it will only stay open for a few seconds, so it's not really ideal for uh, for getting in and out as it will sometimes close and uh, you'll be stuck outside and glitched. As you can now see, we've actually moved the button from this block here to the top block. Uh, most of the surrounding blocks will work, either the ones on the sides or the one on the top. However, the corners here will not work. So, that's the end of lesson one. We hope I haven't been too confusing. One thing which we do need your help on is this. As you can see, when we came here to set up the area, uh, we found this in the, our cliff face. Now, obviously, it's a man looking slightly constipated, made out of sand. Um, what we need to know is, what shall we call him? What shall his name be? Uh, write, uh, write your suggestions in the comments below. So, Neam doesn't actually know that I'm about to do this. This is his house here. And I'm going to play a bit of a prank on him using what we've learned in today's lesson. Uh, just here, I have some units of TNT. And I also have a pressure plate. Now, if I lay a pressure plate on top of a TNT, as soon as he stands on the pressure plate, it will set off the TNT. So let's just hope that he comes along sooner or later and stands on that TNT, or on the uh, pressure plate, and then we can... Uh, ooh, laughter shall ensue. Or at least I hope it will. He'll be here in a second. Where is he? Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. Ah, yes, he hasn't noticed. 